The last keynote before we break for lunch, keynote by Kendrill, unclear and present danger, new approaches towards new age cyber threats. And we have Sakit Verma, Director of Security and Resiliency Practice, Kendrill India, joining us. Can we put our hands together and welcome our next speaker? Conversation with one of the uh, you know, security and IT leaders from the automobile sector we have with us um, today. So, so it's unclear and present danger, right? Um, so, so five key themes and five key messages. First is the emergence of new threats. The emergence of new threats coming from two perspectives. One is that the hack, on one side, the hacker motivations are changing. The hacker capabilities are change, changing, are, are really going through the roof. The hackers are better organizing themselves, right? And they have all the tools, uh, you know, that, 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 the, that we have, you know, on the industry side. So that's one, one big phenomenon which has happened in the last five to six years. On the other side, if you look from a user perspective, we are getting more digitized by the day, even the parking lot um, you know, segmentation is done by the apps and we get our base now by the by our app which we have on the phone. So life is getting digitized, enterprises are getting digitized like never before, at a pace which is like we are coming up with applications for every facet of, of life, right? Second is globalization from, from a digital perspective is again increasing. We are using more and more processes we are employing, which, which is making the perimeter fuzzy. And that really got turbocharged because of the COVID. So the perimeter network, perimeter is getting fuzzy by the day. So, so, on, so, so these forces, you know, both on the bad actor side and on the user side are creating a perfect storm. And if I put in the pixie dust of AI and, and, and uh, 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 content computing, that really increases the risk many, many fold which was not imagined even five to six years back, right? Rather even four years back. So from a customer perspective, you have accelerated threat insights, you have global compliance, cyber resilience challenges, you have, you have to do the secure modernization that in itself is a challenge, and you have integrated security and resiliency. To attain each of these, you have challenges the way I just articulated, right? So, so basically you are running a car, you are also repairing the car, you are also building new features on the car while you are running it at 180 kilometers per hour or 180 miles per hour, right? Now, which is, which is a kind of challenge unheard of in the IT industry, you know, for the last 100 years. So we had disruptions on mainframe, we went to client server, we went to web services, we went to, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure as a code, then we went to Kubernetes, Dockers, containers, all these disruptions we have seen in the last 40 to 50 years, but never has a disruption happened of the scale, of the magnitude, and of the impact that cybersecurity is presenting to us today. Now, the best way to address the cybersecurity challenges is to come up with a methodology and a framework. Now, in every facet, and my, my honorable speakers before me, all of them, uh, without exception, we're talking about methodologies, frameworks, etc., because that is where you templatize the approach. So from, from Kindrill perspective, and since we bring in the practitioner's perspective, we are practitioners, we have a very comprehensive framework, which is around security assurance services, zero trust services, which is largely around device management, if I can simplify it, is around security operations response, and above all around incidents, risk, uh, you know, recovery. So there might be Odds are that we will get, you know, bad actors will get in, then what do we do? If I get infected, my body should be able to resist that. So that's, that's where the recovery services come in. So having set the stage for the emerging threats, how do we anticipate risk from evolving threats? And this is the most important and critical point. It is very, it is very difficult to anticipate risk at an enterprise-wide and, the, and, 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 and a few examples is, let's take the case of AI. Now, the script kiddy, which many of you who come from a development perspective would understand, you know, the, you know, the, the, the immature uh, you know, software developers who, were, who used to be called is, is script kiddies who, were, who went on the dark side, you know, they, were, they have been turbocharged, they, have been, they are on steroids because of AI, because now they've got the capability to write scripts 
even if imperfect, but with the help of AI. So, so the threat capability part just goes up through the roof because now they are powered by generative AI. So in the, in the, in the FAIR uh, uh, you know, uh, framework, you know, the risk, the FAIR framework which is used in the industry as a standard framework, look at the overall risk which goes up. Why? Because the vulnerabilities go up, go up because the threat capability goes up because of, as an example, the script KD is now on steroids. Second example on compute, on, on quantum computing, look at the vulnerabilities. Now today a 20 million qubit computer can decrypt our 2048 number under eight hours. And if that is the case, that means everything can be decrypted. So whether it is a blockchain, whether it is our own uh, you know, uh, security controls, whether it is password, it is now Teddy Bear's picnic to go and decrypt anything. Because once quantum computing becomes ubiquitous, you know, you can, I'll repeat, a 20 million qubit computer under eight hours can decrypt a 2048 <coughs> number uh, string. And that's the MIT report which has come in, uh, you know, lately. So, if, so just imagine somebody having that kind of a facility, the vulnerability goes up because now I'm, I'm defenseless. This is true disruption. Never in the history of 100 years of, uh, of IT industry, since the times of Harman Hollerith, what we used to learn, has this kind of a disruption happened. And that is what is, is making the CISOs and the CIOs have sleepless nights. So how do you protect against threats using zero trust principles? Now, frankly, under all circumstances, the whole philosophy, the approach, which I think is a state of the art as of today in the industry, is zero trust, right? Because that is more of a approach, you know, mindset, philosophy, the way you make the framework, uh, you know, and, and that's where we come in as practitioners, because we might have point solutions, we might have technologies around various security controls, but somebody has to put it all together in the context of a customer and then implement it, deploy it successfully. So there comes the, the, the zero trust implementation approach. Most of the elements are known, should be known to most of you, right? I'll go back in the interest of time to the next slide. So Kindrel Zero Trust Adoption Framework looks at what do we want to achieve and how do we realize that value. And it has various elements. Of course, it depends on the customer, you know, the industry, the, the nature of the security fabric that is there in terms of you know, identity assess management or software development uh, <coughs> approaches, or it can be around incident response. So the whole fabric of the IT state and the cybersecurity controls that, that are put in place go through a, a certain evolved methodology which revolves around zero trust. We go to the next step, which is withstanding. Withstanding, most of the threats now cannot be, cannot be neutralized without having huge amount of automation in place, either in your own organization as an end user, which is sometimes very difficult, or having a partner you know, who is able to address that kind of, and bring that kind of automation on the table, right? So, so we have what we call Kindle Bridge, where we are leveraging various models. So it can be a customer-hosted, customer-managed model. You know, it can be a Kindle-hosted, customer-managed model, or the secret sauce being Kindle-hosted, Kindle-managed model, where we get all the feeds, you know, we get all the, all the feeds and the incidences into our security lake, and then it is... It, it goes through our algorithms, which are proprietary to us. We call it security operations as a platform SOAP. And then we get actionable insights from in a dashboard format to our leadership, right? Meaning the, the SOC analysts or the IT leadership or the CISO office. So these kind of capabilities, generally, it is very difficult for individual clients. So that is where the role of the partner comes in. Last but not the least is the recover quickly from you know, unplanned outages. Most of the clients is still have to get their recovery posture strengthened. Most of the clients, even at the enterprise level, you know, the resilience part is still a lot to be done. And we as you know, market leaders worldwide have been doing it. So what I'll do is I'll talk about the minimum viable company, the, the, least, the least that is 
expected is to ensure that even if there's a breach which is happening or outage happens, there's a minimum viable company defined so that as a skeleton of your organization, the, your clients, your clients are able to get the services and the products and the data which they are supposed to do and the company overall doesn't go down because it's not only the financials, it's also the reputation and of course it's the employee morale and the customer morale which goes down. So to meet the challenges, the organization must first identify what critical business services must be operational to maintain the viability of the company. And that is where you define first the minimum viable company and then get the building blocks in place. And that is protected you know, through the approaches that we discussed that the minimum viable company doesn't go down, come what may. Again, this is based on the NIST time-tested framework. So, so just to conclude on this part of the session, uh, this half of the session is, how do we transition to an integrated security approach? At the end of it, there is nothing which can beat integration, and as I said, a methodology-driven approach. So you engage the business from the start, you, take in, you align on risk tolerance, we should be self-aware about our risk tolerances, Right? Establish your minimum viable company, you take inventory, you move to a zero trust framework, you establish a crisis management plan. Most of the organizations do not have a crisis management team and a crisis management plan in place, which is rehearsed you know, on a periodic basis and updated on a periodic basis. You practice for disruption, as I said, you modernize your cyber re resiliency strategy continuously because the, bra because the dark side is is, is updating continuously, and then you build awareness at the board level. That is very important because now most of the large organizations, at least, the board is the sponsor of, of the cybersecurity initiative, right? So with this, I would like to end this part of the session. Now I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Rajay Khanna, who is the VP and the CIO from Volvo Aishar Commercial Vehicles. A big round of applause for Kanna Saab. Mic is yours. Yeah. So we'll have just two or three questions. A quick, quick again, you know, from a practitioner's view, I wanted to hear from Kanna Saab. So what, what keeps you awake at night? I mean, the kind of organization that you lead. Uh, which is into, you know, manufacturing of heavy vehicles and being a MNC client. You also have a lot of exports going on. So, so as an IT leader, what keeps you awake at night? It's a very simple question. <laughs> the fear of unknown is the biggest thing. Today, you can deal with something which you know and you can handle it out. We can have mitigation plans for that, but the fear of unknown is something which is driving you nuts in every domain. The kind of complexity that has arisen in the last decade or so has made a CIO or a CISO's life miserable. Miserable, like you cannot even imagine it out. Uh, and all of this is stemming from, from where? What is the core? core risk which you're talking about. We're talking about the, the digital information. That is the heart of it. Yes. It was, if it was not digital information, it was in physical form, you can still protect it out. Yeah. But a digital information and the kind of complexities in terms of the complexities of attacks which have risen in the last decade or so has, has made a person's life very difficult. You can't think about sleeping peacefully. I've been mean, uh, looking at the complexities again in terms of from a domain perspective, various areas. We, talk, we are into now connected vehicles which are running on the roads and these vehicles, if compromised, can become a nightmare. Yes. And over the years, what we have seen is uh, while we, we have been trusting our partners, solutions, softwares which are built with, with so much of investment, etc. We are assuming that they are secure, but the kind of vulnerabilities that are coming in the software itself is a nightmare again. So dealing with that itself is a complexity. In a 24 by 7 kind of operations, you cannot think of a downtime. 
you cannot even think of a downtime for mitigation of all those vulnerabilities as well. So these are things which are making it extremely complex and keeping us awake throughout the night. So it's a complete paradigm shift because connected cars, operations technology, and software being everywhere. And if you have a code and if you have a connectivity, that means you have a risk. So, so that says a lot. So, so what would be uh, your two or three top approaches to, to, to manage the risk and the, and the challenges on security? See, as I said, uh, the core of uh, this is information. So information can be protected by the three areas, people, process, and technology. And believe me, there is no 100% sure shot technology which can tell you that, okay, this will protect you entirely all your digital information. There is no sure shot way. Your information will get compromised. The best and best secure organizations in the world have got compromised. And there is no single one way which can ensure protection. You can monitor, you can upskill your people, continuously update them about the threats which are there. And that's what we keep on doing in terms of awareness campaigns, awareness of our people in terms of the threat which are coming in, uh, simulation of attacks, and uh, scenarios where we can educate them. A continuous education is extremely important. Second is on the process part, you have to have robust processes which are time and, time and again tested. tested. Tested for failures, tested for leakages, tested for the entire end-to-end -end scenarios so that, and have a process of monitoring these process, process, monitoring them, and a visibility of that, how the process is behaving. And then comes the technology part. What, as I said, whatever technology you put in, you have to keep it updated. You have to continuously evolve on, on bringing it new sets of technologies to protect not only just to protect it, but also to ensure that it is updated. Because that's an area which the hackers are using today to gain access into your environment. The vulnerabilities in technologies itself, I'm sure any software that is being built today is not 100% secure. Even yes. the security software is, itself is not 100% yeah. secure. So that's, those are the challenges which are, okay. which are very critical for us and that's something which is part of a strategy to ensure protection for the organization. I think that's it. So it's people, process, and technology all together under a defined leadership, which, which when, when everything comes together, then what, what you can have the best possible security. I think that was quite insightful um, uh, as well. So from our side, I think uh, that, would be, that would be it. I would not hold ourselves between lunch and, and, and the people that, uh, you know, the audience that we have. So thanks, Kanna Saab. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate. Tokens of our appreciation coming out to you. We're coming up with applications for every facet in our lives with the advent of digitization. There have been many disruptions in the last 40 years, but none can compare to the disruption that is taking place right now in cybersecurity. And of course, zero trust implementation procedures that have never been more prominent. And just like with anything else, the fear of the unknown which is the most challenging thing in this segment as well.